Um, okay, so I'm not in a position to do anything about the lighting or anything. Um, I'm in Switzerland. I've been in Europe now for a week. I'm here to uh, film the documentary and I'm holding a ceremony here in a couple of days. Um, something traumatic happened a couple of days before I had to leave town and I started having a lot of panic. And so I had to travel for 36 hours having panic attacks and doing the best I could to try to breathe and get through it, get to Paris. I started getting some breaks in Paris, but not enough. And I was concerned about continuing to try to work like this. So I called ahead to some friends in Switzerland and they set up a psilocybin uh, ceremony for me with someone that they knew, which I did last night. Um, I don't know exactly how many grams I took. It was around five, but it was a mix of four or five different strains, some of them very strong. She mixed it um, according to how she read them and what they told her. It was the longest experience I've had, the most profound. I'm gonna share it with you because I tend to be open and vulnerable, but also I feel like there's information that might be interesting um, to you. If you don't care about me or about this, it's fine. Um, I don't know if I can timestamp where the part is I think you may care about. I took them at three. They kicked in in 10 minutes. I told her it would be quick. While we waited, uh, she had a, a deck of the Divine Feminine and I pulled a card and I got the, I'll show you. She's um, the saint of authenticity. And so that is my mission or my role, but as soon as I took off, they immediately started doing surgery on me, on my back. It was very painful. My kidneys, uh, my neck, my heart. No, my heart was first. That was the very first thing I felt is I felt energy and then just right to the heart. And it was extremely painful. And then back, neck. Um, and then uh, they took me and she said my body just fell limp. I, when I was five, my father left. It's been a trauma that I've been dealing with my whole life. I um, have never really been able to remember anything beyond when my mother announced that he didn't love us anymore and he was gone my whole life, even through therapy. And then in EMDR one session, I was able to remember later that evening looking out the window for him. But here in Paris, I had a flashback while I was looking out my window in Paris of looking for him and that I had, I started doing that every day, every night, every day, obsessively looking out windows, looking for him. And having those flashbacks was when I knew I needed to come do the ceremony and focus on that. And they showed me her and I'm in, in, in the trip, I had full memory of laying in my bed that night. My dad usually tucked me in and he wasn't there. And I remember feeling like my soul was dying. And I said, so I guess I die now. And I remember feeling pieces of myself floating out of my body. And I remember everything going dark. And I remember just going <sighs> and knew it was my death. What they told me was that when she, when that happened, a new timeline was created where I had to move on without her. And I was a fractured piece of myself and crippled without that energy and without my birthed self. And then they lifted me up and took me to her and I got to see her. She was really beautiful, and they said they had been keeping her there the whole time, protecting her and keeping her safe. 
but they said I couldn't have her back yet, that there was a lot of work to do. So for three and a half hours, I did a lot of work and I went to a place to discuss the unfair treatment to me by people in my life and that I was exhausted. And that being Amanita Dreamer required an incredible amount of strength and energy. And that my life was draining and that the two could not coexist. And I needed to fix my heart and fix my life if I wanted to be Amanita Dreamer. And they said that there was nothing that could be done about it. And I would have to take it up with the council. So I went to the Intergalactic Council. Met a lot of assholes on the way there. And then I pled my case to the council and I told them I have work to do, but I'm too tired and I cannot continue whatever the soul agreements or contracts or anything that's happening in my personal life can't continue that way and that I'm exhausted and I need my life back. And they discussed it amongst themselves and they said, perhaps you need to go discuss this then. And I, they just sent me down like downward to another place and when I got there there was a very gentle kind being and this is where I think you may care that said um, they told me something I learned in Hawaii which was in past lives if I believe in it I was a real awful person to a lot of people and that I have been incarnating trying to right those wrongs and be of service to humanity to try to find those that I hurt and also in large ways sort of help correct the balance. But that currently the earth is tired and she's going through exhaustion and shutting down her energy and pulling inward and can no longer sustain the breadth of the life that was happening here. As a result, humans have agreed to start collapsing timelines. And what that means is all of the stories that we are reincarnating for, all of the past things that we're trying to fix and correct, we don't have any more times to do that. And that the however many endless amounts of abilities to incarnate into timelines are rapidly collapsing. And because of that, many souls are popping out of those timelines and coming here to this space where I went saying, what do we do? You know, there's all this unfinished business. Where do we go? And they said, it's like this mass disorganized exodus of people, souls, living creatures and things coming in going, where do we go? What do we do? And it's kind of like chaotic and they're still trying to sort of manage it. And they told me until we can find a streamlined way to work it out, we'll help you individually. And so you need to go negotiate with the rest of the beings that you need to balance energy with, you need to go negotiate that with them. So I went there and there was a mediator and they said, immediately you need to give up the Amanita. Give that up in this lifetime and they'll consider the debts even. And I said, immediately, no, that's just not negotiable. I said, I understand I owe debts, but I should be able to choose how I pay them can I speak to them? And they said, no, we are deciding. And I said, that's not okay. And I'm not willing to give it that up. There's going to have to be another way for, for me to fix this. And they said, well, you'll have to take it up with the council. So I went back to the intergalactic council and I told them absolutely not that I have divine work to do here. And they said, that work, though, was to complete those contracts to give to people, to give to the world. And if you want to end the contract, 
end Amanita Dreamer, we'll consider it a wash, and then you won't have to worry anymore about the collapsing timeline. And I said, no, I want to live out this life doing this work. They said, well, then you need to go finish your negotiations. So I went back and they said, okay, um, you can keep being dreamer, but you're going to then have to take on the pain and the grieving of the imbalance. Can you handle that? And I said, I don't know, man, I'm really tired. I remember just saying, I'm really fucking tired. I'm really fucking tired. So I said, I need to go back to the council. I went back to the council and I said, y'all, I don't know what to do. I'm just really fucking tired. I'm so tired. I'm so fucking tired. And Earth is tired. Do you not see that Earth is tired? And they told them, you know, we're dealing with a lot here on Earth with the collapsing timelines, with the shift, with all the pain going on, with all these this, these imbalances, people hurting, the, the people trying to choose, that the Earth is shifting downward, but also moving up and trying to vibrate higher and own our space intergalactically. I said, you know, also people keep fucking with us and other entities are fucking with us and like they need to stop and we need to claim our sovereign right to be entities, to stop being fucked with. I said, I know I'm not the only one coming here and saying this. You fuck with us, you fuck with me, you fuck with the animals, you fuck with the living things. It's time to stop. It's got to stop. And they said, duly noted. And they said, indeed, there are many coming and we are aware. I said, so some massive things need to change. And one of the things that I'm asking for is that I continue to do Dreamer. But I got to have some support and help because I'm just fucking exhausted. My personal life is draining. The panic attacks have got to stop. I just, they're draining me. I can't live like that. And I want to do this work. And it's important. And I want to create the balance of the collapsing timelines that I am ending. And I said, y'all, you gotta work it out. Clearly, I don't have that authority. If they said, then you need to go see the architect. So I went to an architect and they lifted me up. They laid me down and they picked me up into this huge machine and it had mandalas all over it and like you know henna tattoo designs all the beautiful things moving around it like you see in the dmt people the stories you know they looked like that except instead of faces it was a machine but it was a very loving entity but i was surrounded by it and it just kept moving me up in it and then it laid me up flat and it emitted this hum and this sound and it would like kung, kung, goo, and it just made this sound and it was healing something. It felt very profound, but I was unclear what was happening and why. Um, it felt beautiful. I just wanted to stay and look at it. All of the moving and rotating designs all over it um, and then it spun me around and rotated me to another part of the machine and then handed me off to another one that was identical to it and it rotated me up into it did the same thing to me again and when they were done then they slowly sent me back down the that's my trip sitter she's home brought me back down and sent me back to the architect and hold on a minute and the architect said okay you're going to be confused for a while we understand that you can't actually receive all the information that's happening to you right now some of it is in a language that you don't understand and that your soul doesn't speak but just understand that things are in the works. It's, 
it's not finished. It's going to take time, but for now, you have other work to do in, while you're here. But just know that the work is going to be continuing quickly on your behalf and will be finalized at some point. And you'll just be confused about it for a while because you won't be able to understand it even as it's working and happening. And I said, okay, and I thanked them for that. And then my trip sitter guide, um, priestess, beautiful person, came and said it was time to get my child. And so I all of a sudden got really scared, but she said, come with me. And she took my hand and she took me down into the underworld. And, then, and as soon as I went down there, of course, it was a lot of battles, things trying to snap at me, grab me, pull at me. She held me. She kept taking me over to this really beautiful side where there was a, a stream and water and beauty. And then they would yank me back out and try to rip at me and pull at me. And she would help pull me back. And she kept taking me further down and further down and further down until she showed me the girl had been set free by a pawn and she grabbed her. I told her I couldn't do it. I was too busy fighting. And she said, let's go. I've got her. Let's go. And I was really afraid and it was really bizarre and painful and loud in my head. A lot of fighting entities trying to come back up and lots of confusion and things splitting off and like many different things happening at once that I'm unclear about. And when she finally got me up and out, uh, I was confused, but she handed her to me and she said to hold her. But as soon as I did, I left to go again to speak to the same place I went to before to talk about the collapsing timelines. And they said, now, what we have done is we have ended the timeline you were on right before you came here. The life you've been living without her that has been fractured and broken, we have ended that timeline. From this moment forward, you have her and the two of you are now going to move forward into a new timeline, not the one that you originally incarnated in, where your dad left and she died, not the second one where you went on without her, but you are as a whole now starting over again in the same body, moving forward from here in a new timeline. And we hope that you are okay and that you do well with it. However, you will need to grieve the timeline you just ended. It will carry a heavy weight. There'll be an incredible amount of sadness and loss. It's a funeral, it's a death. The people around you may sense it or they may not, but there's a vacuum that it left it was agreed upon on your behalf when you went to go get her that this was part of the way to help you. This was the Intergalactic Council's decision of a way to help you because you said you were too tired to go on, that you wanted to continue Dreamer, that you wanted her back, and that you wanted the Earth to continue to move forward. This was the decision that was created that felt like the best thing to do. And while this one will be a shorter timeline because you're in a body that has already been here a while, we hope that you understand it won't be easy because you're working in an, a time where all these timelines are collapsing and all these souls are doing what you're doing and everyone's having to grieve the loss of the ability to continue to incarnate the way they were and work out those debts and create balance. They're all popping out the same way you are having to negotiate and then grieve. There's just all these beings and entities and 
situations from your planet flying out of your planet just lost and grieving and trying to figure out where they're going and what they're doing and the earth's place intergalactically is shifting and no one's really sure how the new rules are going to come into play so right now there's just a lot of pain and chaos and confusion but the end result is a lot of grieving and you're going to feel that and be aware of that and the goal is to be able to freely allow it and move it grieve your own timeline and the others and the loss of that balance the ending of the way things have always been and starting a whole new way of doing things that's not continual incarnations but the way we have ended all of that for you and set you on a new timeline and just said work out this timeline and we'll renegotiate later what you're going to do be become where all of these souls are going to go and how they will work their way back into the paradigm if at all and they thought you would like to know that that's why i'm telling you i stayed um really confused and heavy trying to come back and then they continued to work on me and made me lay down and they did more surgery on me and it felt like it was the closing of the sutures because the surgery in the beginning was to open everything up and release and remove and then I had to go through all of that learning for four hours and then what they did to me last was uh, closing it all up and healing. I remember I just kept taking really huge deep breaths probably for an hour the humming and the work and just trying to breathe and like jerking every once in a while just <sighs> just trying to take really deep breaths. So that lasted for about an hour. I got up you know slowly tried to sit outside and breathe and um, her husband played guitar. It was really beautiful and I was sitting there crying about the grieving and all of a sudden I felt the whole world tremble and shake and there was this roar and rumbling and I looked at him and I said you're feeling this right because I knew I was tripping he's like oh yeah and I was like oh shit is this an earthquake do y'all get earthquakes he said we do I said, is this an earthquake and it was just because everything was shaking the sound, I've never heard anything so bass in my life. And I just, my whole body was vibrating. I was still high. And the fucking earthquake happened, y'all. What the fuck? I experienced an earthquake in the Alps while I'm driven. <laughs> and after that, a storm rolled in following a record drought. And then I ate amazing food. I tried to sleep and I couldn't. So I was up till like two in the mornings, still high. So from like three in the afternoon till like two in the morning. And got up with a bunch of diarrhea this morning. And I am extremely confused, full of panic again, full of grieving. My heart hurts. I'm confused and I'm confused and I'm confused and my heart hurts and I'm sad and my heart hurts and I'm sad and I'm confused and my heart hurts. Everything feels like I'm tumbling out of control with no direction, even though clearly I have plans, direction, things to do. But when I go home, I have things to do. <laughs> I just don't know how to move forward on a new timeline. I've never done this before like this profoundly. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Sorry I kept you for so long. I gotta get my shit together so I can hold ceremony with Amanita here in a few days. I think it'll be nice to be with her again. I need it. I hope I continue to do right by you guys.
Thanks for listening. I love you, beautiful.